So let's have a lesson on these two 19th century guitar works by Bear. You can get the sheet music, just follow the link underneath the video and it'll take you to that. Um, but these come from his Guitar Schule, his method book, and it's number 21 and 22. If you already have those, just follow the lesson for free and pick up all the tips. So, um, like I said, I've put these two pieces together as like kind of a pairing because the Funeral March is a little bit slower and more majestic, and then the Bolero is a little bit, um, has a little bit more figuration, which sounds fast, even though the tempo is still relatively slow, but the, um, it sounds a little bit more active. These are intermediate works. I'd probably put them in the early intermediate level. Um, they're active and there's some fingerings to talk about, but there's no difficult sections or awkward sections. There's no bar A or anything like that, or really upper position playing. So uh, pretty straightforward in that regard. So um, not too much to talk about with these two works, so we'll just do a quick walkthrough. But what I will say is that because if you play them as a pair, I would emphasize like the slower tempo on the Funeral March and the faster tempo on the Bolero just to make them contrasting. Um, you can practice the melody on its own for both of them, like in the Funeral March. Which will also give you practice with that articulation and whatnot. Um, although his, we'll talk more about how his dynamics and his chords kind of disrupt that melody slightly. But the same thing in the bolero, just the upper line. Um, so pretty straightforward works. Emphasize that melody, get to know it really well, and then put all the chords in there and, um, and and get it going like that. I think that the dynamics play a big part in this piece. Um, some of them are a little disruptive, uh, but other ones are very, very effective. So I would, I would carefully look at them in this work. So let's just do a walkthrough. So for the Funeral March, I'd be tempted to play it very slowly, like... If you wanted that real... Chopin-esque uh, like Funeral March feeling but the thing is the texture is pretty minimal on the guitar um, so I wouldn't let it go too slowly um, and uh, you, you want some kind of momentum through the phrase as well so although my first inclination was to like go pretty fast that doesn't really feel like a Funeral March so much and it doesn't offer much contrast from the Bolero so um, you'll want to kind of zero in on what, what tempo you want. Some people will take it a little bit faster. Some people could take it very slow and make that effective as well. Um, his dynamics are, are pretty specific at the beginning, but they kind of disrupt the melody a little bit. He wants all the chords to kind of really come out. And then he marks um, pianissimo for the, the little melodic thing, and then forte. So um, you'll you'll want to play around with those dynamics and figure out a way of, of making them work. I don't know if you. I think the texture itself um, it goes to these big chords that creates loud sections amongst the quiet ones kind of naturally. So I don't. I wouldn't worry about it too much at the beginning, but later there's some really nice crescendos to pay attention to. So for fingering, um, I've decided to go three two. And then the first finger grabs that G sharp. You could just jump your finger over, but that's a little disruptive to jump. You couldn't do it absolutely legato, um, but it would be fine, um, especially in the hands of more advanced players. They could cover it up. Um, I like this though. It's like kind of maximum legato, um, so that's useful. You could slide as well. So whatever you prefer, it doesn't really matter. It's not a, a really fast piece. So let's go through this. Not much to talk about. Except here, you'll want to practice this in isolation quite a bit. Um, if you're more on the beginner side, this will be a little bit tricky, but... Um, with my fingering, I've decided to go 3-4-2. Then first finger to G sharp, and then back to our, you know, three two there. Just it matches the beginning. It's also really useful when you shift back up. Your second finger can stay on the second string when you go back to that chord. 
see how the second finger can just stay down? So that's really useful. It means one of your fingers you don't have to worry about. You just have to get the three and the four uh, working. And you don't have to think about that second finger much. All those little um, tents are accent marks or um, marcado marks actually. Um, which just mean they're marked. You bring out those notes a little bit. I think it's more, he's just kind of emphasizing the rhythm more than anything. There, there, and then you're back. A little bit of a crescendo to the cadence. And when you get grab that last chord, again, if you're more on the beginner side, you might find that a little bit tricky, but just make sure your knuckle is brought around. If my knuckle's here, I can't even reach that note, that A on the sixth string. But if my knuckle is nice and close to the guitar, I can reach it and also have curvature in my fingers. So um, you just have to make sure your hand is always aligned in order to reach that comfortably. In the second half, just make really emphasize those um, dynamics, get soft, and then grow. He always brings out those big chords, right? And then again. Um, so here I, I do the same thing as the beginning. Two, three, because we've just been doing that the whole time. It just makes legato sense, right? staccatos right I'm mainly doing it with, with just by lifting my fingers off but also my right hand you can see kind of go back down um, I wouldn't worry about it too much but articulate it um, make a little a point of it it's obvious he doesn't need it legato so it's staccato um, but it's also kind of a little bit punchy funny here because he has marcato on the bass notes and then accents on the upper notes so it's kind of like everything is accented but he definitely wants those off beats but I guess he's saying like don't let the bass disappear um, there's just kind of accents everywhere um, and then on the final note he has a little forzando uh, which is funny don't love that a lot. I mean, I kind of like it when phrases end softer, but he ends with a bang. So, okay. So for the bolero, um, I would take a little bit faster tempo for contrast. I mean, the boleros aren't supposed to be very fast, but these, this one has 16th notes in it. So it will appear fast, even if your tempo isn't, um, isn't actually going by that quickly. By the way, all the slurs that I've added, um, they're editorial. He marks them all um, as I am. You know, even the... All those. Uh, I think the slurs, if you want the tempo a little faster, the slurs really help um, with the flow. a fourth finger on the G sharp again just have that knuckle prepared have your hand aligned so that you can reach that if your knuckle is far away you won't be able to reach it um, second line so bar five remember when you arrive at that final C chord that C is the end and you just sneak those other notes in. Don't make a big deal of, of that final thing. And then soft and legato. Um, I just repeat fingers in the right hand there. It's, it's pretty tough to alternate um, when you have like multiple three note chords and stuff. So um, pretty much just repeat. It's not that fast. Chords, just make sure you're using one and three so that four can go on the B. 
definitely the most legato way of doing it, right? And bar 15. When you play that B, use your first finger. That way your second finger is prepares you for the beginning again, right? When it repeats itself. So one, two. And then it's pretty much a repeat. little works um, they're not there's nothing um, amazing about them from a compositional standpoint but they work really nicely on the guitar they're in a great key and they're quite they're great little performance pieces that are relatively easy um, you know polishing them and performing them is still a little bit of an effort but there's nothing particularly awkward about them and um, I'm so interested in finding pieces like this for guitar because um, it's hard to find pieces for students that are um, they're like uh, show pieces that they can perform really well and they're not too awkward. Um, and I think this really fits the bill, kind of like that last merits piece that I put out um, two weeks ago.